Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. Starting today, we'll work on the vocabulary words that you will find in chapter number three. In chapter number three of the book that I'm holding in my hand here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have just finished doing all the math problems from this book in the event that you need help in math. All the problems, all the math problems in this problem, all the math problems in this book have been solved. You will find the solutions from day number 1 through 50. Just type in HESI math 1 through 50. And if you need more help, the math on the T's is very similar to what you'll encounter on the HESI and there are 80 videos on that. Today, as I said, we're going to begin our lessons in vocabulary. Chapter number 3 is where the story begins. Right here, on page number 48. These are alphabetically arranged, which means they have no rhythm or rhyme to it, one word to the next. We're just going to go one after the other. Uh, in the sequence in chapter 3. Let's turn to it, page number 48. Page number 48. Most of these words are very straightforward, very simple words, but we're going to cover them nonetheless. Let's begin. First one. Abrupt. No matter how simple a word may be, I always make a point of writing the pronunciation. That's just what I do. Abrupt is an adjective. When you learn a word, when you, word, when you learn a word, don't simply learn the word and the meanings of the word. You must also know how to pronounce it properly, obviously, and you must also know what part of speech it is. Ad abrupt is an adjective. What does it mean? It simply means all of a sudden, all of a Sudden, unexpected, unexpected, without notice, without notice, abrupt. What's the adverb of it? Adverb would be, adverb would be, abruptly, obviously, abruptly. The car was working fine up until today. And then you stopped, the engine stopped abruptly. This engine stopped abruptly. It stopped all of a sudden. It stopped unexpectedly. It stopped suddenly. Abruptly, suddenly, unexpectedly, without any notice. It just stopped all of a sudden. Abrupt. Let's keep on going. Number two. Abstain. As I said, these are alphabetically arranged, that's why they do not have any rhythm or rhyme to it. There is no confluence from one word to the other. There is no confluence from one word to the other. There is no confluence of ideas, there is no confluence, there is no theme. Do you understand? In the event that you want to learn the word confluence, since I brought it up, and now I have to find out where the hell it is, or oh, day number nine. In addition to the series that you're watching right now, if you want to learn the word confluence, there's another series of vocabulary words you will find at my channel. There are supposed to be 100 videos. As of right now, there are 75. On day number 9, we learned the word confluence, which means coming together. Coming together of different ideas, different notions, or it could be used literally as in two bodies of water, two rivers coming together, confluence of two rivers. From one word to the other, there is no confluence of ideas because it's alphabetically arranged. There is no, there is, there's no, that's, the, that's about the only system that is there. Abstain. What does it mean to abstain? Abstain simply means, let's first write the pronunciation, even though it's a very simple pronunciation. Abstain. It can be pronounced abstain, abstain, or you can pronounce it as abstain. This Upside down E is uh, 
abstain or abstain. Either way, either way is considered proper pronunciation. What does it mean to abstain? It simply means to keep, to keep oneself, to keep oneself from doing something, doing something, to keep oneself from doing something. For example, you might be told, or you might, somebody, someone might tell you, please refrain from smoking in my house. Please refrain from smoking at my house. In other words, please don't smoke when you're, when, when you're inside my house. No smoking in my house. Please refrain from smoking. Please refrain from swearing. Don't swear. And so on and so forth. It, all, it, means, to, it means to refrain. It means to refrain. Now, refrain is a tricky word. Refrain is a, is a tricky word. The word as it is used here, to refrain, obviously, it is used here as a verb. As a verb, as a verb, refrain means exactly this. To keep oneself from doing something. To keep oneself, to, to keep oneself. from doing something. Of course we are repeating ourselves because it's the, it's the, it's the synonym of abstain, refrain when it is used as a verb. But refrain is a tricky word because it's, it can also be used as a noun. Now do you know what it means when refrain is used as a noun? Refrain, a refrain that is, is a phrase. Let me put it a little bit higher so we have room. It's, it's a noun. It's a phrase. It's a phrase or a verse that is repeated that is repeated at a regular interval at regular intervals throughout a song or a poem now listen, if you have trouble reading my handwriting, you really have no right to complain about it because I always make a point of reading uh, reading out loud to you everything that I write on the blackboard. So as long as you're listening, even if you cannot read the handwriting, you should be able to understand it. One more time here. What's a, ref what, what's a refrain? What's a refrain? It's a noun. What is a refrain? A refrain is a phrase, is a phrase or a verse that is repeated at irregular intervals throughout a song or a poem. If you hear a typical song, there are always one or two lines that are repeated at regular intervals. That's how people recognize the song. That's, that's those, those couple of lines, uh, one or two lines that are repeated throughout the song are the ones that stick in our mind. And those lines are called refrains. Every, well not every, but most poems, most, most songs consist of refrain, a refrain, or to refrain. To refrain means to keep oneself from doing something. Let's keep on going. Number three. Access. Access. By the way, this word refrain that we just learned, This word refrain that we just learned is something that we had we have already we had already learned in our regular vocabulary series on day number 58. If you just type in vocabulary words, it doesn't matter which exam you're preparing for, whether you're preparing for TEAS or HESIS or GMAT or GRE or SAT, just type in GRE vocabulary word or HESI vocabulary word on day 58 and you will find the video where we learn the words. Access. Access is a tricky word because again it can be used it can be used both as a noun or a verb. It can be used both as a noun or as a verb. It means to to have to have means 
or wherewithal to get or obtain something. Access means to be able to obtain something, to be able to get something. If you can access it, that means you can get it. You can, you can, you can obtain it. For example, you might say, you might say that uh, that uh, this file, this file, is classified. This file is classified. I do not. I do not have an access to it. You see, an access to it. Here it is being used as a noun. I do not have an access to it. It is classified. Or you might say, or we might say, the computer is down. The computer is down. I cannot, I cannot access the file. Here it is used as a verb. I cannot access the file. I cannot get to it. I cannot obtain it because the computer is down. Let's go on. Number four. Number four, we're going to learn this word. Wherewithal. It's a noun. There, with, all. Wherewithal. What does it mean to have wherewithal? It's a noun again, just like just like access, it is a noun. To have wherewithal, to have wherewithal means to to have to have necessary means or ability or resources. do something. If you have the means, ability or resources to be able to achieve something, to be able to do something, you say we have the wherewithal. Don't worry, we can do it. We have the wherewithal. We have the wherewithal. Typically when this word is used, typically it is used in the sense of, it is used typically, especially, it is used in the sense of financial means. Financial means. I did not, I did not, I did not uh, uh, continue with my studies because I did not have the wherewithal. I did not have the means. I did not have the resources. Typically, it is used as a resources uh, as in financial means, financial resources. Do you understand? Of course, they cannot, of course, they cannot get this project done. They don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the resources. They don't have the financial means to, to get it done. That's the next one, number five. Accountable. Accountable. What does it mean to be accountable? To be held accountable for something means to be, to be responsible for something. If I'm accountable for this project, if I'm accountable, if I'm accountable for it, I will be held responsible for it. It is my duty to be held, to be held liable. It is your duty, it is your job, it is your responsibility, you will be held accountable if this thing is not done in a timely manner. 
We gave you this fixed amount of time, we agreed on the time frame, we agreed on the price. You better get it done. If you do not deliver, I will hold you accountable. I will hold you responsible for it. You will be held accountable. Don't think you'll get off the hook. The noun is accountability. Accountability. Now, if you are off the hook, if you are off the hook, it's an idiom. It's an idiom to be off the hook means you're not responsible. Well, you were responsible, but I'm, I'm not going to hold you accountable. I'm going to let it slide. I'm going to let it go. I know, I know you were the one who broke it, but that's okay. I won't tell anybody. I won't tell anybody. I will cover for you. You're off the hook. You can go. Do you understand? On the other hand, if you, if I, if if you're not, if you're not let off the hook, that means you're being held accountable. You're being held accountable. You, you, have, you will have to answer for it. Number six. Adhere. Adhere is a is a is a verb. Adhere is a verb. It can be used. It can be used both literally, and it can be used. Metaphorically, it can be used both in the literal sense of the word, as in adhere, or it can be used in a metaphorical sense. It can be used metaphorically. Literally, it means to adhere means to stick together, to stick together, as in with glue. Or, or tape. If you tape some things, things together, they are dear to each other. They are, they are stuck together. That's the literal meaning of the word, adhere. What does it mean metaphorically when somebody asks you to adhere to something? It means to follow some rules or regulation. To follow, to follow some rules or regulations. To follow some rules of regulation or to follow certain way of doing something. In this in this business, in our firm, in our firm we have strict dress code. We have strict dress code. You cannot show up you cannot show up at, at work in a t-shirt and a blue jeans like you have been doing for the last two days since we hired you. We have a strict dress code. You must have a suit and a tie and a proper shirt on. We have a strict dress code. If you do not, if you do not adhere to the dress code, if you do not adhere to our dress code, we'll have to let you go. We'll have to fire you. You'll be dismissed. Do you understand? You better adhere to our dress code. You better adhere to our rules and regulation. To adhere. The noun would be, noun would be, Adherence. Adherence. That was it for today. That's all I have for today. We're going to learn a few words every day and we're going to keep making progress and of course eventually we'll get there. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.